So once again, Judd never fails to amaze us. Last night in his semi-final of the German Masters against Barry Hawkins, he played another absolutely incredible exhibition shot from green to brown. So let's have a look at the shot that Judd played. So this is what Judd was faced with. He was very close to the side cushion. He plays this green, he hits the white, and all of a sudden, he hit it incredibly hard, but the white has just suddenly come to that very quick stop, and he's nicely on the brown. So in this video, we're going to look at exactly how this shot works, and then I'm going to play one and try and replicate the shot that Judd played. Right, so this is the shot that Judd was faced with. The white ended up very close to the side cushion. The green was right up the other end of the table, and he needs to try and get from green to brown. Now, actually, the natural angle with this shot is that the white would just hit the bulk cushion and come back over the green spot and down the table again. So if I just show you one of those shots, this is actually what would happen if you just hit top of the white. Obviously, the white is very close to the side cushion. So we're hitting top of the white. I've potted that green, and then the white has just come back down the table and all the way back down towards the pink and black spot area. Now, if you wasn't playing an exhibition shot there, that's definitely the correct way to go from green to brown. You just play it with that top spin, a lot slower than I just played, and just let the white come off the bulk cushion and leave the brown into the opposite pocket. But obviously here, Judd was deliberately playing an exhibition shot. So let's have a look at exactly how you get the white to do what Judd's did. Now, the incredible thing about Judd's shot, if we just have another look here, is because he's already won the frame, he's on a break of 113 here, he literally just gets down and just hits the white straight away. He doesn't even really feather up to the shot. And also, he's playing so much speed, it actually causes the white to be bouncing along the table all the way that it travels towards that green. So let's have a look at Judd. So we'll start the clip, and you can see that he literally just one little quick feather, and then he hits it, and we get that lovely effect of the white stopping. Now, the way this shot works is that Judd is using maximum topspin on the white. You're having really to hit the top of the white because it's so close to the side cushion anyway. But we're going top of the white, maximum topspin, and trying to generate as much of that topspin as you possibly can on that white ball. And then what that's going to do, so let's have a look at this slow motion clip. I've played another shot here to give you some idea of what's happening with the white. Because you've played so high on the white and you've hit the shot hard, you can see that my white is travelling towards this red. When it hits the red, it's then still got lots of topspin left on it as it goes towards the side cushion. And when it hits that side cushion, it then still wants to travel forward and back towards the side cushion again. And that's the effect that Judd used on this green to brown. He wanted lots of topspin to trap the white up the top end of the table. Now, a lot of people might be thinking, well, why not try and dig down on the white and try and get a little bit lower down and hold the white that way? But it doesn't really work to dig down on the white. I'm just going to show you why. So if we have a look at another one of my uh, shots here, this is digging down on the white a bit, trying to hit the middle of the cue ball. And you can see that I've potted the green, but what happens is the white actually just comes right back down the table towards the pink and black spot area again. And that's because the extra top spin effect that we just saw on that red wasn't there. I hadn't got that extra spin to trap the white up the top end of the table. Now I'm going to have a go at playing this shot, and I think the thing that makes this shot incredibly difficult, and probably one of the greatest shots of all time, is that there's lots of elements that make this shot really difficult. There's a lot of distance between the white and green. The white is really close to the side cushion, so you can only see a small amount of the top of the white ball, and also you're playing at such high speed that it causes the white to be bouncing along the table, so you need incredible accuracy to get the pot, let alone enough topspin on the white to generate all that trapping effect and get the white to land in a nice position on that brown. Okay, so with all those things in mind, let's have a go at me trying to replicate this shot then. Okay, so when I get down to this shot, you'll see that I actually do a few more feathers than Judd. I'm actually getting a little bit of a feel for the shot, and also, when I actually hit it, you'll see that I just throw my whole body into the shot to try and generate enough speed and get all that spin on the cue ball. So you can see me doing my feathers there, and then I've hit that shot, and I've got it to stop up the table there, but nothing like as good as Judd there. So I did manage to stop it up the top of the table pretty quickly, pretty pleased with that shot, but you can see just how impressive that shot was from Judd. So to do that when he'd only got one opportunity, and like I say, he didn't really even feather up to the shot, he just got straight down and hit it and still managed to play the shot as well as he did, which was absolutely incredible. Now, as always, lots of people say to me, how many takes did it take to get that shot right? And of course, this one, I just walked straight in the club and I did it first go. So, of course, no, I absolutely did not do it first go. This has got to be the most difficult shot of Judd's that I've ever tried to replicate, and I still didn't manage to get it as good as Judd did it. Just shows what incredible Q power Judd has got and what a phenomenal player he's turned into. So, I probably actually spent about an hour, maybe just over an hour, an hour and 15 minutes playing around with this shot and just learning exactly how to strike the cue ball. And in the end, 
realizing that I'd absolutely got to throw my body into the shot to generate enough speed with the cue to get all that extra top spin on. So did manage to get a reasonable attempt in the end, so quite pleased with that. But like I say, it's got to go up there, one of the best shots ever played. Absolutely incredible. So as always, everybody, if you did enjoy this video, please remember to give the video a like. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I do lots of fun videos like this, and I also do lots of tutorial videos on this channel. And the more support I get just means I can keep these videos coming regularly. As always, everybody, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.